Welcome to PV Magazine Live. This is Christian Rosland, America's editor at PV Magazine, and we're here at the InterSolar Europe trade show. I'm lucky to be joined by Randall Johnson, who's the chief analytics officer at the Alevo Group. Randall, thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us at your booth. So, you know, we obviously Alevo does a number of things here. Alevo makes batteries, deploys batteries, has an analytics division, does software. How do these different pieces come together and work in the company? Okay, yes, we have uh, essentially four product lines at the moment. We have grid scale energy storage. We have uh, a smaller CNI energy storage. We have real time operation software for operating energy storage. And then we have an analytics service for studying and sizing energy storage and informing policy and regulatory on how energy storage can contribute to the uh, energy policies. Now, in terms of these, you obviously are in charge of the analytics. And in terms of the analytics and the deployment of batteries, how do those work together? How does, how does analytics support the deployment of batteries? Sure. So uh, there's five key variables in the support of batteries with analytics. First and foremost is what will the batteries be doing, the use case. Second is where will the batteries be located. Third is the megawatts. Fourth is the megawatt hours. And fifth is when should they be installed by to start providing the benefits. And so analytics obviously informs all of these. And how, in a practical manner? Okay, so what we do is we use sophisticated computer technology. We have a supercomputer, uh, and we use the supercomputer as well as other desktop analysis uh, to where we size the energy storage. And, and sizing the energy storage isn't necessarily a trivial process, say like if you're combining it with solar or wind or other assets because uh, there's uncertainty of how those assets operate, there's intermittency, and then sizing the energy storage to then meet the use cases in combination with other assets and then optimizing the energy storage to maximize the operations of other assets in the grid. That's a lot of variables. There's a lot, clearly a lot going on there. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because you talk about the megawatts and the megawatt hours. I find that an interesting part of energy storage in that we have two main ways in which we're sort of, a, we're giving a rating, a, megawatt, a capacity rating and an energy rating. Yes. And obviously those are very different. Can you talk about some of the, some of the use, the best uses of the Alevo battery in that regard? Sure. Sure, so there's two kinds of uh, uses of the battery. One is for uh, power. Power happens on a regular basis. Movements of city demand uh, movements can be short intervals, like one minute at a time. The demand can change quite significantly, where batteries can help uh, optimize that rather than using thermal power plants to move and to operate. So batteries help with that. And then also from the energy side, things like uh, shifting solar power is where the energy helps out with us on the energy side. So both for power grids, they, it has a couple different features that are needs that are required for batteries both on the power side and on the energy side. So there's different use cases for both. The Levo battery works very well in frequency regulation as one of the key use cases uh, as well as other applications of stack services of multi-service applications. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now to get back to the analytics. We, uh, we talked a little bit about how the analytics to help the deployment of the batteries, but my understanding is, is that Alevo's analytics are also being used to inform policy and policymakers, and that you've been involved in some significant reports. Can you talk a little bit more about this role of informing policy and policymakers? Sure. Uh, so what we have is, as I mentioned earlier, is we have a supercomputer, uh, and it's the only supercomputer in the private space that we're aware of that's tied to how to use energy storage. The issue with energy storage has been is monetizing only one or two of the value streams of energy storage. But energy storage can actually provide value to the whole supply chain of the energy sector, generation, transmission, distribution, and demand. And so what we do is we use these, uh, the supercomputer to study grid systems for states, for countries, and then we run many iterations of renewable scenarios, thermal scenarios, storage scenarios, energy efficiency scenarios, demand response scenarios, all together and with uncertainty, lots of cases, and then we start to come up with some averages to say this is where uh, this is the effects that energy storage as one solution among all other solutions can help 
And so we've been involved in the Massachusetts State of Charge study. That was a very interesting study. The way the perspective of it uh, was to do a benefit analysis across the whole supply chain of the electric sector. And recently we've been uh, awarded a grant with the United States Trade and Development Agency for looking at energy storage applications in Kenya for broader application to Africa of how to integrate, say, solar plus energy storage to improve the development of electricity and to reduce the reliance on fossil fuels to uh, increase uh, the, uh, the um, access of electricity of the 600 million or so Africans that, that don't have electricity. Wow, that's some fascinating stuff. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. Yes, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And this is Christian Rosalind with PV Magazine Live.